Well, the Fed raised rates. Banks, at least in the US, didn't collapse as of this recording. We're going to talk about all the news. We're going to talk about the financial situation currently. Are we in a spiral? Are we in a crisis? Are you ready to summarize the week? Let's start. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Micah Stocks from the channel Stock Talk with Micah Stocks, where we talk about investments and stocks. And this is only for your education and, of course, entertainment. This is not financial advice by any means. Let's dive into the market. This is how the market ended. Look at the volatility. You can see this on the regular Google Finance uh, charts, the volatility. But at the end of it, the Dow Jones ended almost on 0%, so basically unch, unchanged. The S&P up 1%, NASDAQ up 2.1%. We're going to talk about how come the NASDAQ went up 2% in the current environment. And of course, Russell came down by 0.78. If we look year to date, we can see that the Dow is still on the red territory, minus 2.7. Uh, the S&P is green for the year. NASDAQ is green for the year. And the Russell is on the red side. On the crypto, Bitcoin had a volatile week. Uh, but at the end of it, when we look back at the last five days, Anch ETH is up 1.1%. The smaller coin started moving. Year to date, Bitcoin is up 67% and Ether is up 46%. When we dive in to the different indices, we can see the utilities and real estates leading the charge. And on the other side, the consumer discretionaries and financials are on the red side. Diving even deeper, solar stocks, gold miners. Gold has become a very popular trade right now. And oil and gas exploration are the ones leading the charge. And on the other side, we see the airlines, the REITs, and retail. When we look at our heat map, you can see the new banks. So the new banks are not the JP Morgan, the Bank of America, the Morgan Stanleys, and others. These are the Microsoft, the Googles, the Apples, the one with a heavy balance sheet, the one that ha the companies that have tremendous amount of free cash flow because they're not going to close in 24 hours while banks do die very, very fast. Let's dive into everything that happened this week. But before we do that, if you enjoy these weekly summaries, it would be more than a pleasure if you can subscribe to the channel and, of course, hit or smash that like button that will only help expose the channel to more and more people that would like a stock market summary with amazing thumbnails uh, every week. Let's start with JP Morgan. JP Morgan is advising First Republic, and actually they, they have... Uh, they have made First Republic survive the week. First Republic is still with us. Um, and First Republic is still looking for strategic alternatives, uh, whether it's capital raise or anything else to keep afloat, mainly not to have a bank run and close shop. Last weekend, not this weekend, last weekend, several of regional bank CEOs met Warren Buffett. They flew all the way to Omaha. And if you're in the US, you know that no one flies to Omaha without a good reason to meet the, the Oracle himself. So they flew, whether it's the Western region banks and other, to see how they can save themselves from, from bank run. Like I, like I said in the intro, no US bank closed this week, but Credit Suisse did. UBS buys Credit Suisse earlier this week, and rumor says, or actually a minister, says in the Swiss uh, uh, government, says that Credit Suisse would have never lasted another day. They had a huge bank run. People pulled out money and they would not be able to survive. Um, Matt Grossman from uh, the Wall Street Journal looked into the financial sector and said, I'm zooming in, 186 banks may be prone for the, sa the same similar risks the same similar, the similar risks as Silicon Valley Bank. The reason for that is because they haven't hedged in the right way their short-term exposure to bonds versus their long-term. And uh, whether it's 186, 124, or 240, it doesn't really matter. That's a lot of banks, a lot of money. That brings uh, Janet Yellen and Powell into a situation where they need to act. Powell and the other Fed members decided to increase the Fed's funds rate to 475, basically creating a situation where it's better 
to hold bonds than to hold cash in the bank. By that creating and now even more pressure on the liquidity and the pressure on the banks, because why would you keep cash when you can get 4.75 on uh, a one year T-bill? Janet Yellen is trying to calm things down, but she's not. I'll say it in an easy way. She doesn't come out and say, we're going to save everyone. And without saying we're going to save everyone, she's not creating the tailwind that the financial sector needs. But that doesn't mean that she's not flip-flopping and 24 hours after saying that, sh that there is still a limit and FDIC, she comes out and says the strong actions we have taken ensure that American deposits are safe. So again, she's not saying for sure that she's going to save all the depositors, but she is trying to hint. But a hint is not something for sure. Lisa Abramovich, which follows... Uh, works, of course, for Bloomberg, but follows the, the bond futures. And this is a huge, huge issue right now in the market. The Fed, I have it here. Let's just pull this chart up. So the Fed and the dot plot says that the rate is going to stay 5.1 for the rest of the year. Bond market is saying, Powell, you're wrong. You're not going to keep that rate. You're going to drop it. From 4.75 or 5%, that's where we are now, all the way down to 3.7. That's a uh, 100 basis points, even more. More than 100 basis points in a year. This is creating even more volatil volatility, even more uh, people are unsecure of the situation. Because if the bond market is signaling to the Fed, you are terribly wrong, and the Fed keeps on hiking rates, then something is going to break and they will need to change course. This is very interesting to follow because this might create the next pop in the bubble, the next drop, whatever you would call it. This is the Fed's balance sheet. They worked so hard to reduce the balance sheet in the last three weeks. They've increased their balance sheet back up. Now, it's not the same as stimulus checks. It's different. They're providing liquidity uh, against one-year bonds for the financial system, but still they're increasing their balance sheet. CTCO Jane Frazier comes out and says that she has never seen a bank collapse after four tweets. This is 2023. Welcome to the new era of social media. A bank run can start just like any other revolution can start with a tweet. And that's what happened. And now the whole financial system is asking itself, are we prepared for a bank run that can happen really, really fast? And that is the reason that I showed earlier why the Fed is providing all that liquidity to make sure that the banks are not in a situation where they need to close shop just because of a tweet. And this is Balaji, who two and a half years ago predicted the COVID and now is predicting that in 90 days, Bitcoin would reach $1 million because of hyperinflation that might happen with the dollar. My opinion, I don't think in 90 days we're going to see. Actually, it's a bit less now because he published that uh, four days ago. Um, I don't think Bitcoin is going to reach 1 mil. But you know what? If, he, if it will... Something very bad is going to happen with the financial system. And I'm not sure that Bitcoin for one mil is, would be our problem. We talked about this chart. And now we're going to see two charts of, another, of, of more banks that are in problems. One of them is the Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank, the German uh, uh, huge bank, the biggest bank in, in uh, Germany has their credit default swap surging in the last few days, predicting that the bank is in trouble. Same happens for Charles Schwab. Again, a, a bank in distress where everyone now is looking into financials, trying to understand the ratio between short-term and long-term, whether there was hedging or no hedging. All these things are creating credit risks and spiking the credit default swaps, which are basically insurance. This is the insurance for bonds against uh, or, or bonds that support banks. When insurance goes up, it means that the risk is going up. 
That is why these are usually early signs of something bad that is going to happen. Is that the case in Deutsche Bank? The Chancellor of Germany says no. Is that the case of Charles Schwab? Their CEO bought 50,000 shares, so he doesn't think it is. But the only interview I can uh, remember is David Favor interviewing Bear Stern CEO four days before Bear Stern goes under and the CEO says, we have enough liquidity, everything is fine. Not trying to create any pressure, I'm just saying that CEO's role is to say everything's okay, market's role is to guard the money. The last thing on our financial uh, section is very, very problematic. More Americans are using buy now, pay later services. Now, they're not doing that for, for furniture. They're not doing that for TVs or monitors. They're doing that for groceries. And that means that they don't have free money available. Most of the people that are taking buy now, pay later probably are not doing that because they took all their money and put in short-term T-bills or T-bonds. They probably have a problem of liquidity and this is another warning sign. Now enough with the warning signs. Let's look at the news. Almost 800 companies since October 2022 shed almost half a million jobs. 150,000 of them were in technology. The rest were consumer discretionary, financials, industrials, and others. You can see the bubble chart here. Amazing numbers, crazy numbers, which is not related to any pandemic or anything else. Vanguard plans to shutter their China business. They don't see enough inflows. They are going to uh, exit most of their uh, expansions in China, and they're also planning to exit their ant joint ventures. On the other hand, Morgan San Stanley says we're outright bullish on Asian stocks. They even gave a number. They said that the Hong Kong Hang Seng index, in their mind, is supposed to gain another 28%. That is crazy. Who's right? Them or them? You know, that's what makes a market. That's exactly what makes a market. Goldman Sachs is using ChatGPT, or at least their version of ChatGPT, to, to assist developers with writing code. Better code, less developers, I hear deflation. If we're mentioning very advanced technologies, it, uh, we should pay respect to Gordon E. Moore, the Intel co-founder and the person behind Moore's Law, and he died in the uh, last uh, day or two. At the age of 94, he was the one behind Intel's super success in uh, the early days of Intel. And he's the one behind Moore Laws that says, Moore Law that says that every two years, technology doubles itself in capabilities. And uh, he was a true, true visionary in the way he led Intel and, of course, Moore's Law. And, were you, and it's being used almost in any place in the market and even with ChatGPT. Let's continue with the competitor to ChatGPT. Google open barred AI for testing by the US users in UK. Of course, there's a long wait list. It's not that open, but it's a beginning. NVIDIA had their keynote this week, and if you're not yet convinced that NVIDIA should be part of the so-called FANG, you should see the keynote. Amazing technologies, they're at the forefront, and if ChatGPT, or we are now at the iPhone moment for AI, it's more than picks and shovels. It's a lot more. NVIDIA, you should see that. GameStop, the only company I'm going to mention earnings for last week. The reason for that is surprise, surprise, they have turned a profit. Why is that surprise, surprise? Because I still don't understand the business model behind GameStop, but apparently they have turned a profit and we should give them a kudos for that. Coinbase gets a wealth notice from the SEC. Um, the SEC believes that the way Coinbase uh, run some of their products needs to be in a different way, which require relevant uh, licenses, and they don't have the licenses, which means that they are uh, 
not obeying federal law. And that's why they send them a Wells Notice. A Wells Notice is basically a preliminary a determination that the SEC is going to enforce some kind of federal action against them. I have no better explanation to that. Block, formerly known as Square, plunged this week after Hindenburg set, uh, send a short uh, report against the company says that Jack Dorsey's companies is facilitating in a fraud using their cash app. Block, of course, is uh, responding and is planning to sue Hindenburg. The stock went down 20%. Hindenburg did exactly what they needed to do. At least let's be cynical for a second. That's what they do. They publish a report. They put, open a short beforehand. The stock goes down 20%. They cover their short, or I don't know if they covered all of it or some of it. They made money. Now, were they truthful or not? Let the judges decide. Ford EV business lost in 2022 $2 billion. Apparently, building an electric car is not that easy. Ford, with all their legacy knowledge, with all, the, with all their capabilities, are figuring out right now that building an electric car is a different beast. And when they understand that it's a different beast, then now they're stuck losing $2 billion in 2022. 2023, they're planning to lose $3.1 billion. It's going to be offset by their ICE business. And they predict that in 2025, they will have 10% uh, automotive, EV automotive gross margin. Just in comparison, Tesla today, the, let's say their biggest EV competitor, has around 22 to 25 automotive gross margin. So Tesla can go down a lot to where Ford wants to aspire, which provides Tesla the, the ability to reduce prices while Ford is stuck trying to create profit. Um, something, something really drastic needs to change in Ford, and we haven't heard from GM, probably the same situation. TikTok CEO got drilled this week after attending uh, the Congress. Four and a half hours of uh, Republicans and Democrats on the same page. When actually at the first or second question, he basically fell at the first to the first trap, which they asked him, is the Chinese party involved in TikTok or did you talk to them before the searing? And he couldn't say no which means that the Chinese party, the CCP, is involved in TikTok. Year and a half before presidential election, my assumption is that TikTok is going to have a very, very difficult time in the US, if not even uh, closed or banned or something, unless they find a very rapid solution to that. That is why Snap and Meta and even Netflix had a great week this week. Don Do, Q, Do Kwan was arrested in Montenegro this week after trying to flee to Dubai. And you're probably asking yourself who's, who Dokwan is. Dokwan is the person behind Terra Luna, one of the stable coins that was supposed to have uh, people's money behind it and actually didn't have anything, committed fraud. And he has an extradition request from uh, the US as well to be charged in the US. British regulators softened the stance on Microsoft Activision, Activision Blizzard. Maybe we will see this deal happening eventually. Uh, Activision Blizzard uh, stock went up to around 85 bucks a share. The deal is supposed to be 95, so they're getting closer to the deal price, which means that the market is starting to believe that this deal is going to happen. And that is the end of the summary of everything that happened last week. Let's talk about next week. Earnings. Carnival Cruises is uh, reporting Monday morning. We'll have Walgreens, Lululemon, and Micron on Tuesday. We're going to have RH on Wednesday. And on Thursday, we're going to have Canoe and Skills. But basically, we're winding down uh, earnings. And we're this is the week of March 27th. Two weeks from now, we're going to start hearing from the banks. And if we didn't have enough drama from the banks so far, two weeks from now, we're going to have that drama. Fed members are going to be able to talk this week, and believe me, we're going to hear a lot from the different Fed members on their view 
of uh, the situation in the market, raising rates, not raising rates, everything related to that. That's going to happen this week. We're going to also have the personal income uh, month over no month. We're going to have the PCE on Friday. We're going to have jobless claims or initial jobless claims on Thursday. Not too dramatic reports this week, but yet another week. And when we go back looking at the S&P, which is, let's say, the beacon that we keep looking at, we are still at holding patterns. You can see the S&P around the 4,000, close Friday, 39.50, which is very, very close to 4,000, still hasn't taken a clear decision where it wants to go, whether it understands that the problems are behind us and we can start a new bull run or the problems are just waiting behind the corner and we are going to drop underneath the December lows or even the March lows. I think that around that dropping to under 3,800 will create the stress that would bring the S&P to around 3,750. But we still have a lot of work ahead of us. Underneath the surface, we start, we're starting to see, of course, financials and regional banks are um, pulling the Russell down. We saw that in the summary, but fangs are taking right now the burden and pushing the market or keeping the market afloat. It kind of reminds us of late 2019. And that is the problem because this is what happened early 2022. Now, will it fail again and we will find ourselves looking down or everything's going to be calmer? It's mainly, uh, I would say this. Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell, if they come out, come out and say, we're not raising rates anymore, we're going to take down rates, we are going to provide the liquidity needed, we're going to backstop any bank, don't worry, they're, they're going to reduce all the, a lot of the pressure in the market, and the market would be able to digest it and start fixing um, the other things. Otherwise, this lack of clarity is creating the pressure that we're currently in. That is the weekly summary. If you enjoyed anything you saw or everything you saw, smash that like button and we will meet here next week on our weekly summary. Till next time, take care. I'm Micah Stocks. Bye-bye.